Hello and welcome to a very special episode of In Conversation With, brought to you by our friends at Northumberland Pride to celebrate LGBT History Month. And I've got to say thank you so much for getting involved with us. We are very, very excited to be working alongside you. Now, my name is Kelly Scott, and I must admit, I am thrilled to be introducing our guest. Now, she's a singer with a four octave range, a dancer, a choreographer, a performer on stage and screen, and most recently wowed us all on RuPaul's Drag Race UK season one. I'm talking about the legend, that is, Davina DeCampo. Hello there, Davina. <laughs> now you are looking absolutely amazing. So obviously lockdown seems to suit you pretty well, doesn't it? You look fabulous. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I just sleep in this now. I don't ever get changed <laughs> out of it. These are my pajamas. So, you know, just like everybody else. <laughs> so, so how have you found lockdown? I mean, it seems to me some people have done absolutely nothing and sat down and just watched telly and drank wine. You look like you haven't stopped. Yeah, it's been uh, the entire year I've I've been full steam ahead. Um, and then January hit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, mm, I don't want to do anything now. <laughs> so I've done loads and loads of stuff all year. And then uh, just as, as we've crept into 2021, it's sort of it what lots of people were going through in the first lockdown. You know, for me now, that's that's got to me now. I'm at that point where I'm like, OK, come on, let's move on, guys. Let's let's start getting back to to normal life or at least as much as we can. Yeah, but it yes, must be so tough. Busy. It must be so tough, though, particularly for you as a performer, because I remember the last time I saw you, you were performing on stage at Club Kids in uh, it was God, I think it was back in August. And it was at the start of it all where everyone was in their pens and it was all a little bit strange, wasn't it? <laughs> was that one of your last big live performances? I think that probably was one of my last performances. And um, that tour was, I think, definitely my last performance uh, live. Um, because after that, Manchester went straight back into uh, lockdown straight after that anyway, you know, because it's not London. <laughs> 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 so everywhere else can be in lockdown as long as it's not London. Um, um, nightmare. But what about uh, so, your, do you know what must have been really annoying? Obviously your album Decoded, I bet you just, you want to be out performing it. Like surely it must get so frustrating. Absolutely. I mean, that's been really, really difficult. You know, the same with the Frock Destroyers. We've uh, had an album out this year as well. And we're just like dying to get back on stage so that we can perform it for people. But, you know, it's coming. I can't be too worried about that. The, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I have to be grateful for that. Now, I love the way you're looking forward for it. Have you got any plans for more albums or what's the dream when things do get back to normal? For you, what are you most looking forward to? Absolutely, yeah. I'm already working on some musical theatre stuff. Um, so I'm going to go back to my roots ooh, ooh, um, and do a bit of musical theatre. Um, and I'm also writing more material as well. I'm always writing, so that, you know, that never stops. Um, what am I most looking forward to? You know what, at the moment, this is terrible. I'm really looking forward to the gym being open. <laughs> See, I bet a while ago, could you imagine you'd ever be saying that? Like, I'm excited no! to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a million years, no. <laughs> But I, I really want to go, I, w I just want to go to a dance class or to an aerobics class or just to a class, just to somewhere where there's other people are involved. Um, you know, ra at the moment I've been doing sort of circuit training in the garden. So I've been doing shuttle runs and then breaking out into, uh, you know, load bearing exercises or, you know, something. Um, and I just, I want to be doing something where there's people who I don't know and we're all doing a class together rather than seeing the same faces again and again. Yeah. I'm just looking forward to touching people, you know, just randomly not being scared to give people a big old cuddle. Yeah, I'm so about the hugs as well mm -hmm. that this has not been the one for me. I'm really craving uh, physical contact from other people. And I'm married, so of course, you know, there is no <laughs> physical contact anymore. <laughs> 
Uh, now, obviously, uh, this time last year, it was all about you on RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Uh, so you were in the first one. Now, are you actually sitting down and watching the second one? And if so, are you enjoying it? And do you have a favourite right now? Absolutely, I'm watching it, yes. I Like, I love Drag Race. For all the problems and issues and all of that other stuff that surrounds it, you know, I really enjoy it for the the com competitors. I really get, I really love getting to have a little, because you don't get to know people, you know, that's a misconception with Drag Race that you really get to know people. You don't, you get a snapshot into their life at that point. Um, but I really... I really enjoy being able to uh, see that little snapshot and and get an inkling of what those people are like because then I can interview them and find out more. <laughs> <laughs> get digging a little deeper. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, we've, when we first uh, started talking about doing this event and we were talking with Northumberland Pride and we wanted to speak to someone that would be really good to speak to everyone, but as well, youngsters in particular. Um, and your name just kept coming up again and again and again from so many people. And it wasn't just because, of course, you're an amazing performer and we adore seeing you on stage, and uh, which we do. But it was also, you've always been open and so honest about any struggles you've gone through. Um, and been really keen on educating, particularly about Section 28. So as it is, obviously, um, how does um, LGBT History Month um, how does that, how important do you think that really is for us to be talking about right now? Particularly right now, considering what's, you know, there is the groundwork being laid for rolling back trans people's rights in the UK. And there's a, a very, I believe, accurate uh, saying that you scratch a transphobe and you find a homophobe. Um, you know, it's that old adage of first they came for, then they came for, then they came for, then they came for me. Um, and and we have to be really, really aware of what's happening right now um, because the language is laying the groundwork for rolling back, not just trans people's rights, but our rights as well um, as LGBT, LGB people and Qs and everybody else as well. Um, so it's important for us to be able to recognize that. And the only way to stop history from repeating itself is by knowing what happened in the past. And it was exactly the same arguments in the 80s that were being used against gays and lesbians as are being used now against trans people. Um, and if once, as soon as you can recognize that, then you know the argument for them is already lost because none of what they were saying in the 80s was true and none of what they're saying now is true either. Well, that's why, thank you so much for doing this today. That's why we are thrilled that you're here. And we were inundated with so many emails and it was of a, a broad mix of people. It was a lot of people's parents were coming forward and just wanted to say thank you to you for opening their eyes about stuff. So I've got a load to get through. We're gonna try and get through as many as we can of the people <laughs> who couldn't be with us. We are very lucky that we've got actually people joining us right now. We have got uh, Ellie, Thomas, Ellie, Darren and Sean, who we should be able to see in just a moment. If you want to give us a wave, if we can get you on screen. Let's have a look. Hello, guys. If you want to say a quick wave to Davina. Now, we are going to be with you in just a moment. So if you just hold tight, I'm going to start with the first of our questions. OK, Davina, the first one is from Mel, who's 22 and says, some of my friends are acting differently since I've come out. Did you find that? And did you lose any of your friends or family when you came out as gay? Um, some people will act differently. And I think most of the time when that is the case, it's because they've got their own internal struggle, you know? So they're, they're thinking about these things and they're not ready to talk about it or come to terms with it. Um, or they've been indoctrinated about, you know, gay people are evil and gonna burn in hell. Oh, I mustn't talk to you. Um, you know, which, is ludicrous and ridiculous and um, it's hard, but you just have to re realize that if, if that's what they're gonna be like, you can then ask yourself the question about whether you actually want them in your life. Because we're, we're given such a short amount of time, there's no point fighting with somebody over something that you cannot change within yourself. So, do you want that struggle constantly with that person? I don't, I just go, 
chop them out. Bye, try love. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, mercenary, Mel, I, I hope that's really helped you out. I love that Hello. one. So we've got another question here. Uh, the next one is from Dan, who is 17 and wants to know, Davina, who was the first person that you were told you were gay? And what was their reaction? And do you wish possibly you'd asked, so, oh, you'd, yeah, you told somebody else instead? Um, I, I mean, I was talking to people about that I was gay from kind of year seven at high school. So I can't actually remember who the first person it was, but I think maybe um, my first sort of little group of friends that I talked about it with uh, would have been a girl who was in my form called Debbie Green, who very sadly is no longer with us. Um, but they were just all really like, okay, great. Should we go have a cigarette? And I was like, I don't smoke, but yeah, I'll do that. Is that cool? <laughs> That's lovely that it was such a reaction like that, though. You're like, you must have had a nice group of friends around you that were like, whatever. Yeah, I was really lucky to have um, lots of people who, you know, once people get to know you, it's a different situation, isn't it? You know, people are generally nicer when they know you, but when they don't know you and they don't know about stuff, that's when the problems have always ar ar arisen for me. Oh, um, that's lovely. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Now, our next one, we're going on for Liz, who says, Davina, how do you self-identify and do you get annoyed if people get it wrong? Um, I identify as non-binary. Um, it, like, it's only now that that language is kind of moving into the wider discourse. You know, we were talking about this stuff. I mean, I at least was talking about this stuff when I was at uni, which is, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, so, you know, it's not a new thing. It's just that it feels like a new thing because now more people have got the accurate language to, to talk about themselves um, and, and how they... Uh, how they engage with the world. For me, like I don't, I, it doesn't bother me if you refer to me as he, she, they, they, you know, whatever, because that's what you're seeing rather than my lived experience. But that isn't the case for everybody. So it, you know, it's just good manners really to ask people how they identify when you meet them if you're not sure. Nice and easy. Yep, and nice and easy. And now our next question is, is actually from, we've got her with us right now. We have got uh, Ellie. Let's see if you can join us. Hi. Hello there, Ellie. And what is your question for Davina? Um, my question is, so I came out as asexual um, kind of halfway through last year, and I'm finding it hard to kind of be confident when people ask about it and stuff. So what are your tips on kind of, once you've come out, how to live proudly? Um. I mean, for me, in terms of coming out and living proudly, like I'm campus a row of tents. So, you know, I'm not somebody <laughs> who can hide. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm very clearly um, a gay person. Um, and I'm like in the street, I'm very androgynous. People get very confused about who or what, you know. Ooh, don't know how to talk to you. Um, yeah. So uh, just... For me, it's just not about apologizing for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you are who you are and that's okay. There are millions and millions of different people in the world and we all have a different experience of, of living. Yeah. So just not apologizing for being your authentic self is, is the only way really to be living proudly. And actually, it doesn't even need to be that deep. Just by existing, no. just by being you, just... You yeah. know, so don't feel like that's an issue. If you don't feel like it's an issue, nobody else mm -hmm. generally well, does either. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie, my darling. Oh, so I hope that helped out, Ellie. Okay, we've got uh, another question from you now. This is from Thomas. He's also not on the sheet. He's actually here with us right now. <laughs> Are you there, Thomas? Hello, Hi, Thomas. Hi, What's your Thomas. question for Davina? Uh, so my question is, I'm um, a gay man. Um, and when I was younger, obviously, I struggled with my identity quite a lot. So my question to you is, how would you encourage those currently struggling with their identity to be proud of who they are? Um, I mean, much like I said to Ellie, don't, it's not, you know, coming out or deciding who it is you are, it's not a race. You know, I know people who are 50 and still aren't 100% sure about who they are. Life is a journey of discovery anyway. So don't feel like you have to know right now as a, 
12, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 25 year old person, because that's just not how life works. And it changes anyway. You know, what, you know, when I was 16, I liked Ant and Deck. I would rather gouge my own ears out than listen to Ant and Deck now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those things shift. All of those things shift as your life goes along. Um, so, so just, you know, right now I feel like this. And that's, that's all you, that's all any of us can do is just be like, well, you know, right now, this is where I am and not worry about it. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Oh, thanks so much, Thomas, for joining us. And now our next question, uh, Davina, is all the way from Finland. And uh, we've got a message from Laura who said, I work with adolescents who are questioning their gender identity. They're in the middle of growing up towards adulthood and looking for their true selves. Um, how did you manage school time being different? Well, school was horrible. <laughs> I was really lucky in that I had a great friend group. Um, but because of, uh, I mean, homophobia was really prevalent in the 90s. Like it, it just was, you know, the 80s and the 90s, homophobia was like, it was the, it was very derigore of the time. It was, oh, great. You're homophobic. Brilliant. You're welcome here. Um, so it was just very widespread. Um, so in terms of, you know, people now struggling with or, or you know, thinking about questioning, um, it's just about supporting people and giving people information. You know, so you feel like this. OK, well, you know, here are these other people who felt like this or are that and they've done this and they've done that and they've achieved these things in their lives. You know, it's about showing that whatever's been told to you as a kid, you know, that you have to be married with 2.4 children, whether you're a, a man or a woman or non-binary person or, you know, whatever, uh, that actually there are other ways of existing and that's okay. It's not that's that, perfect because you know, she's not also added. Deal. See, she was so excited that you were coming on this. She said, um, "Thank you so much for doing this kind of program and throwing in a little bit cheekily." Are you coming to Finland soon? Once you're able to, <laughs> you've got an invitation. Hopefully, <laughs> I would love to come to Finland as soon as possible. As soon as Miss Rona's gone, I'll be there. Yes, don't you? We'll be like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next is from B. I love this one. It says, "Hi, Queen." My name is B. My pronouns are they and them. I'm a year four teacher at primary school in East Manchester and I'm talking to my students about LGBT History Month and their engagement and response has been absolutely amazing. We discussed Section 28 and I'm so thankful that you've been vocal about your own experience as it's really helped me show the children a real life example of how it affected LGBT people's lives and mental health. Now, some parents have expressed concern about me teaching the children about LGBT people and their rights because they're too young and innocent to be learning about gender and sexuality. So my question is, what would you say to those parents to support them and educate them about the importance of LGBT inclusive education for their children? Thank you so much. B. Kiss. Mwah. Um, I mean, first off, if you've ever let your kids watch EastEnders or Coronation Street or Disney or uh, I mean anything on TV or any films, then you're already teaching them about sexuality and gender because there is already this enormous plethora of cis heteronormative art and films and literature that's being produced for everybody. So if you don't give kids that information that there is another way of existing and you can be happy, they will not see that and be able to feel that. And that's why it's so important about teaching about LGBT relationships. You know, lots of those kids in that school will meet gay people. I mean, they've probably met gay people already. Uh, so maybe let's tell them about that so that it's not weird, so that it's then not something that is other. It's something that is, oh, it's just a, another part of life, another part of the rich tapestry of this world that we live in, you know? So if you teach kids about it, it won't be weird and you won't be in uh, accidentally creating bullies. 
because well, that's, that's what happens when be. kids don't understand what something is they bully each other uh, well, thank you so much for that. I'm sure that's really going to help be out in Manchester when she's teaching. And now we've got another question here going to... Ah, it's actually someone who's with us right now. This is Darren who's joining us, who's actually the chair of um, Northumberland Pride. Hello there, Darren. What's your question for Davina? Hi, Davina. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and ask two questions, if you don't mind. Outrageous. Um... <laughs> 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 so the first question isn't mine it's from Sophie who is non-binary so uh, Sophie's question is do you have any advice for a teen who often gets stopped and asked and asked what they are and how um, do you deal with that yeah it's a, a really difficult one that it happens to me a lot as well um, I I am probably not the best one to offer advice on how to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you can answer in whatever way you want or you can choose not to answer you don't owe anybody an explanation you don't owe them your time you don't owe them your voice you don't owe anybody anything so if you don't want to engage with that person don't if you do if you if you're making the choice that all right i'm i'm gonna talk to this person um, you could ask them questions as well. Why are you asking me? Why are you interested? What is it going to do for your life if I give you that information? Why is it important to you? Because it's not, we're just two people on a bus. So I'm gonna get off at my stop, you're gonna get off at yours, and we're all gonna just move on. Um, you know, you don't owe anybody anything. So it is up to you about how you uh, decide to engage or not with those people. And have you got your second question, Darren? What was your second yes, question? Thank you so much for that. Um, <laughs> and my second question is the cheeky part of the question, and it's, are you going to come up to Northumberland and headline our pride? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass you my manager's email. No problem. I'd love to. <laughs> thank you. I love that. Shy Burns getting out, do they? You might as well give an ask. Now we've got um, Phoebe who's going to be joining us now, who's got a question for you. Let's see, Phoebe. Are we there? There we Hi. go. Hi, Phoebe. What's your question for Davina? So my question is, who or what inspired your whole drag persona? Thank you, Phoebe. Um, I, I don't know, really. I... I was making a musical a few years ago and I realized that as a child, I'd been drawing this um, female character with big curly hair and quite large um, particulars. Uh, and then I'd kind of realized that that's what I turned myself into, this drawing that I'd been drawing since I was like, you know, six or seven. Um, so the kind of big hair and other bits, uh, comes from that and then um, I'm influenced by loads of other people though you know like Tori Amos, Kate Bush, um, Martha Graham, uh, you know really strong powerful intelligent women uh, are, are what have kind of influenced me in terms of doing drag. Oh, we hope that's helped you out, Phoebe. Thank you so much for joining us. And we've got Thank another you. one who is joining us live as well, which is brilliant. We've got Ellie. Are you there, Ellie? Hi, Ellie. What is your question? What have you got for us? Um, so it's what inspired you to become a drag queen and how RuPaul's Drag Race has influenced your drag career? Okay. Um, well, like I came at it from a really different perspective to most people. I've been reading um, loads of, gender theory, queer theory. I'd been reading loads of stuff about gender performativity um, and gender construction. And, you know, so I'd been reading loads of stuff about gender. And then that sort of flowed naturally into reading more about drag and drag as a performance art, um, which is a kind of weird way into becoming a drag queen because most drag queens are like, I'll go out at Halloween, I'll dress up and I'll get really drunk. And oh, now I'm a drag queen. Um, 
you know, so mine was a much more kind of academic way in, which probably is why I talk the way that I do. <laughs> um, in terms of drag and how RuPaul's Drag Race has um, impacted and affected that, I mean, for my career, it's been fantastic. It's given me an amazing platform so that I can come and speak to lovely people like you. Um, and then also just in terms of drag in the UK, um, one of the things that it's done is it's made the expectation much higher. So, you know, when I started out, YouTube was hardly a thing. So you couldn't check out makeup tutorials and stuff like that because they just weren't there. Um, whereas now there is this expectation that you're going to look amazing and everything's super polished and um, which is a, a weird thing for British drag because that's not really what it's been about up until now. Um, so I think there's there's like amazing things that Drag Race has done for the UK and then there's other impacts that uh, are kind of missing the richness of British drag. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's a little bit spicy. Uh, thank you so much, Ellie, for that. Now, talking about um, RuPaul's Drag Race, um, we've got Michelle who's messaged us and said, when you watch the series back, uh, when you were in it, was there anyone that you changed your opinion on that you might have liked when you were in there or not liked and now it's flipped? Uh, Michelle, I had a terrible moment there where I thought you were going to tell me that I looked grey. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, yes, yes, there there is somebody. Um, we're, we were friends and that's no longer the case. Um, and the longer I watched the show, the the less I could class that person as a friend, actually. Um, and it, but that's okay. You know, that's just life, isn't it? We, You see how other people behave towards you and you make choices as to whether you're going to accept that or not. And that's life. That's Bella. life! <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, we've got a Michael who's messaged, um, who said, what are your thoughts on straight men being drag queens? Great, fantastic, why not? Disrupt the gender binary, smash the patriarchy. Yes, come on, why not? The more the merrier. <laughs> exactly, more drag, more drag. Uh, and we are ending now, this is our final question. And uh, it is Sean who's actually with us right now. Uh, Sean, what is your question for the lovely Davina? Um, <laughs> hello, lovely Davina. Um, so my question, my question to you is, um, so just like yourself, I also have a drag queen alter ego, Miss Betty Thunder Thighs, and when I'm all dragged up, I feel absolutely fabulous. Um, it's taken a little while for me to gain the confidence and get to where I am now with my drag. Um, but my question to you is, what advice do you have for other young drag artists who haven't yet taken this step? In terms of, um, the advice I would give to people who are just starting out, remember it's not its not a competition. Drag isn't a competition. Um, we do this with art in almost every arena. We turn it into a competition and that's not what art is. Art is about expression, about challenging, about creating a, an emotional or intellectual response to people. Um, so think about what it is that you want to say. What is it that you want to do with drag? Like, People have this idea that, you know, particularly now, getting onto TV, that's the end goal. It's not. There has to be something else. You have to have something that you want to say with what you're doing. Otherwise, why are you doing it? <laughs> I mean, it's okay to just go out in drag and have a great time. That's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. Um, but if, you, if you're going to take this seriously as like a career or as a job or as an artist, then what is it that actually you want to do with it? What is it that you want to say? What are the things that you want make, to make people think about? Um, so that's what I would say is, you know, what is it that you want to do with it? And then that will inform how you do drag, you know, whether you want to be a, a pageanty, gorgeous, glamour queen, or you want to do, you know, more the other side, comedy, crazy, insane uh, drag, you know, like Ginny Lemon, she's crazy drag, but she really has something to say. And she's, you know, she's got a very specific point of view. Um, 
So think about that. What is it that you want to say about the world? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank now, you. Now, Becky, uh, while you're still here at the moment, I was just wondering, Davina, <laughs> imagine you were on the panel uh, of RuPaul's Drag Race and you're looking at Betty's look and you're going to tell her how amazing she is. What would you say about how Betty's looking right now? So she's strutted down the catwalk, looking the way she does. What would you say? Tens, tens, tens across the board. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and just quickly as well, just um, I've got my prize um, framed photo of when you did Cinderella at Newcastle. Um, ah! And there, there is us in the middle there. <laughs> Look at that transformation. <laughs> but no, thank you very much, Davina. <laughs> Thank you so much, Betty. Oh, well, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, Davina, honestly. That's the end of our questions. I know you're so busy, so we so appreciate you joining us. And what a perfect way to celebrate LGBT History Month. Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to see you back on stage, strutting your stuff in front of a load of people like you deserve to be, because we miss you. We want to see you in person. I mean, this is great. Your podcasts are great, and it's great seeing you on the telly. But I want to see you close up, so then when we do, we can give you a big cuddle. Just, you hey, just try and stop us. I would us. love it. I would love it. I'm ready for all the hugs. As soon as we're allowed, I am so ready for all the hugs. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. And take care, and hopefully we will see you soon. And so thanks so much to Davina, and of course, thank you to everyone who's got involved today. Whether you sent in a question, or maybe you came on screen as well with us, we just want to say a massive thank you as well to Northumberland Pride for putting all this on. Thank you so much, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you soon.